Okay, that should be fixed. I don't know why that setting was undone. There we go. Cool, you guys can hear things. Awesome. So yeah, my mic was on. My settings had like undone themselves, so we should be good. Um, yeah, I haven't streamed in quite some time, so maybe that's why. I just haven't messed with it. Okay, good. Thank you guys for subscribing. I'm gonna turn down my... Um, my speakers and make sure everything is good to go. Thank you, uh, thank you Link Fan also for resubscribing 13 months in a row, that's right, and I'm so sorry that I took a break from streaming. I just like constantly kind of come and go. <laughs> Apelkatrox, thank you for also subscribing, and uh, thank you Link Fan for gifting a sub to Scarlet Moth. I might have been getting ahead of myself on the notifications, but anyway. Um, this is the photo that we're going to start editing today. I'll catch up over here. I don't, I still don't have two, um, monitors. I need to get one. But instead of that, I have a laptop open next to my desktop. Um, Orange Crush, thank you so much for the sub as well. Saying all the best, Heidi. All right, so this is what we're working on today. Um, this is a photo that Jared took of me yesterday. Uh, we went to a location here in Washington called the Iron Goat Trail. And what it is, is um, an abandoned rail line. Um, so this is me standing in the entryway of a tunnel that cuts through the Cascade Mountains. And I believe it was one of the most ambitious, like drilling, tunneling railroad projects of the time. Um, and it was built to replace a, like a winding track that had been going through the mountains that got destroyed by an avalanche. So, um, yeah, the tunnel itself is really dangerous. So we didn't go very far in cause you're not supposed to, but we just kind of stood in the mouth and started, um, that way and I wanted to get this dramatic shot from behind and if you can't tell this is a 2B costume um, from the video game Nier and this was actually not made by me is this oh no this is the wrong one that's yes I know I know I want the regular one that you can draw with um, this costume was not made by me this was made by my friend Valerie uh, who goes by Tifa IA Cosplay, I believe. Um, I, I mean, I know that's her name. I don't know if that's how she pronounces it, but that's how it's written. <laughs> um, so, uh, she had made this costume, and I had, I guess, had trouble finding a, a place and a time and a person to do a photo shoot with, and eventually tried to sell it and was frustrated and decided it was a cursed costume, in her, uh, her words. So instead of completely throwing it away, she actually gifted it to a photographer friend of mine, um, Corwin Johnson, uh, Mindfall Media. Actually, I think that's a normal thing. I don't take that out. So yeah, I just took out the backpacks and stuff that we had left within view of this, unfortunately. Um, so she did some battle damage to the costume, which you can see only a little bit here since you can't see very much at all anyway. Um, and we did this photo shoot with it. Luckily it fits me perfectly, <laughs> or yeah, for the most part. Um, and if you will notice here, along the side of this photo, this photo has big dick energy. <laughs> uh, oh, hello, so many people are here in the chat. So many friends. But yeah, there's graffiti all over this tunnel because, you know, of course there is. So I'll have to get rid of that big dick. I guess I'll do that next. I might as well do all of these things before I really get into changing colors and things like that. Um, let's get in a little bit closer to this large penis. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna, like, 
do content aware on like section by section and see how that goes. Yeah, that's gonna be good. But yeah, the other side of this tunnel says 420 blaze it in giant letters. That did not work at all. So, you know, other <laughs> other well-intentioned hikers were here. Uh, Link fan, thanks for gifting a sub to Kitten, and thanks to both of you. Top 10 dicks in gaming. Um, Orange Crush is asking, uh, that they saw the pictures of me in Arwen on the middle of the river standing on rocks and wondering how I got up there in costume. Well, it's not as um, tall as it looks. Like, I was able to climb up pretty well. And that costume is um, pretty manageable in terms of, like, walking and, and climbing on things. So that, that's how I did it. Thank you, Jared, for subscribing for 13 minutes in a row. And, yes, Jared did take this photo. Uh, I came out here on this trip with two photographers. One of them was Jared, and one of them was our friend Corey. Um, who was visiting us and that was one of the reasons why I put some effort into looking for locations and um, kind of scouting and finding things to photograph or finding places to photograph these costumes that would be appropriate and interesting and so we did our best um, with that. I had a couple ideas for 2B, but this one was the one that we decided to go and explore. And I'm really glad that we did because this was just such an interesting site with a lot of um, really cool history. Because this is right, basically the spot where the avalanche happened, not on this tunnel, but like very, uh, very nearby. So I'm like getting distracted talking and doing this at the same time. I'm gonna have to re. I'm gonna have to hit that corner again. But let me get rid of the rest of this ball sack first. I want to keep like the natural variations in the wall. I'm not trying to f clean up the wall or change the color of the wall in any way. I'm just trying to get rid of the spray painted dick. <laughs> so there we go. Dick is gone. Hey, Mindfall. So yeah, Mindfall here in the chat is my friend Corey, who accompanied us on this trip and was the one who kind of coordinated the costume. Let me make sure there's not, yeah, there's some graffiti over here, but I feel like it doesn't even really read. I'm gonna get rid of a couple like little sections just to make sure that it doesn't really look like letters, but I don't think this one has to be as, uh, carefully removed. I can do this a little bit more casually, I think. Um, so Corey, the girl who made this costume, Valerie, is a friend of mine also, but Corey is mutually friends with both of us. And, um, oh, Link Fan, thank you for gifting us up to Corey. That's very kind of you. Link Fan is a resident sub gifter. I'm getting distracted. I'm like doing the same thing over and over again and yet still like losing my place and forgetting what I'm doing. Um, Corey was the one who kind of arranged this and brought us together and made it happen. Um, and this was actually in the, the works since before Katsukon because our original intention was to shoot this at Katsukon and it did not happen because of how much stuff we had to do at Katsukon because I already had a full schedule by the time that we even like decided to do this um and so there we go I think that's probably enough it doesn't really look like graffiti to me anymore that just looks like kind of colors on the wall so that's fine with me um let's save that which needs to be photoshop file Yes, Link Fan is the resident philanthropist. That's very accurate. Yay! Okay, Tifa is here too. Is she? I see her. Uh, she just tweeted my uh, <laughs> my stream is happening. So I'm gonna assume yes. Also, thank you for the um, thank you for the donation, Link Fan. I don't know how I missed that. I guess that was just a long side all of the subs and things I need to keep my eye on on things but I have so many different things going on mindfall what happened oh um I can give you a permission to cop to post a link sorry about that you'll be automatically 
<laughs> not allowed. Uh, or kitten, kitten's got it. Okay, sorry. Well then I've already, you're already ahead of me. Oh, hey there, um, Tifa, Tifa IA, I guess. How do you, is that how you pronounce it? Or what do you go by when you, when you say people, your name out loud to people? Uh, that is my friend Valerie. She's the one who made this beautiful 2B costume. We'll zoom in on it a little bit. Uh, actually, I'll show you this other photo that I'm also working on that I haven't really done anything with yet. But here's another one um, featuring the costume that she made. You can see a little bit more of it here. Um, I did restyle the wig a little bit just to suit my face, but the costume was made and destroyed by her. Uh, she did the distressing, the rips and things, and I added a little bit of blood. And uh, our sword was donated by Corey, who also was present for the shoot and arranged all of this stuff for us. So, um, no, it's a cute name. <laughs> uh, so this is the costume that we shot. These are the two photos that I have prepared for the stream, but I wanted to just show it off since she is here. Um, I have guest bag, the guest bag. And yes, everybody here in the chat, thank you guys for for hanging out. So yes, this is 2B from Near Automata, if that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. But um, this is the photo that I wanted to post first because it's so dramatic and atmospheric in the, the mouth of this tunnel. I did a little bit of editing in Lightroom before I started here. Not a ton, but um, just enough to do a little bit of color grading for the most part and like adjusting the exposure, which I'm going to continue to do in Photoshop, but I wanted to start there, which I'm going to kind of rotate the whole image just barely. That was like 0.4 degrees. <laughs> Cool. Well, I don't even need to fill in any gaps because of the layers beneath it. There, you don't even really see anything. So that sounds good to me. Hey, Apelkashrox, thank you for the $5 saying, still no second monitor in the wise words of Ag Anya's. Unacceptable. Well, anyway, I have some more ease. Uh, well, thank you very much. Um, Could I see through the blind, uh, the blinder, the blindfold link fan? No, I could not. I had no idea. <laughs> yes, uh, I had no idea what was happening and I had to just watch uh, or listen to, listen to the direction from the photographers. So for a lot of the early shots, I was not wearing the blindfold and then I put it on at the end. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do some adjustment layers. So let's start with curves. What does auto look like? Let's see. All right, just brightening it up a little bit. I don't disagree with that. Okay, we'll start there. We'll see if it, if I want to change it any. I'm kind of increasing the contrast in the shadows, which I'm fine with. Actually making it much brighter is kind of cool. I don't really care to see that much of like, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to debate like whether I want to change the trees in some kind of way. Like I adjusted the color somewhat to make them, um, I think kind of suit the, the other colors in this photo. So, the kind of glow up here was naturally present in the image, and then I brought the blues down here a little bit more towards teal uh, when I was color grading this in Lightroom. And I wasn't really sure what to do with the greens in here, but I tried to just adjust them in such a way that they would complement these other photos, other colors on the outside of the photo that I already really liked. Um, and now that I'm looking at this and considering, considering brightening it up quite a bit, I'm wondering like, if we even need the detail in the um, the trees and stuff, like whether we're trying to look at what the branches actually look like or whether just kind of letting them be blown out, I think is more dramatic and interesting. You love the shape of blue inside the tunnel link fan? I agree. Um, it's adjusted somewhat, 
Ah. Hello, Rebel Lady Wolf. So I also added some green to the darkest shadows and that's really coming out with this adjustment, which I think is nice. Okay. I'm just kind of playing around with this right now, but I think having them kind of blown out is Like, you can still see what it is all the way up into the sky. It's not, like, gone. And I feel like letting it live in this medium gray tone almost, like, robs the photo of, like, the true contrast and drama it deserves. <laughs> so I do want to just blow out the highlights because we know the trees are there and the green is the least interesting color, in my opinion, in this photo. So, I don't want to, I'm just kind of comparing what I can do with a lot of these mid-tones. Maybe something like that, that kind of establishes a baseline of like the shadows of the trees. And so really that just makes them more contrasty, which is what they were missing. They looked like super gray because they there was like so little information there that had just been like stretched out or compressed. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the technical term for it, what I'm trying to describe, but it makes sense to me. That's kind of nice. So we see the brightness of the outside and it really makes a much stronger contrast with the darkness. So this isn't the kind of shot that you're really supposed to see what's going on with her. Like it's, a, you're, it's supposed to be a small figure, figure silhouetted. It's supposed to be about um, the atmosphere and not really about seeing all of the details of the costume or something. Um, one other thing that I want to do to make some changes to this image. Unfortunately, it was difficult or impossible to pose with my, um, with both of my feet like fully visible in the shot. Uh, and the reason for that was that the top of this is a curved surface. So I'm standing with my weight on this leg on a flat surface that was lower on this, on the far side and then my other foot is up here on a curved surface, but I didn't trust myself in these heels to hold myself up. Um, so I'm gonna dodge this area over here. Even if it's just a little bit to try to bring out a little bit more of the um, the top of this like round timber so that my leg doesn't just disappear into another stark shadow like to create a little bit of separation there I wish the whole foot was visible but it just wasn't it just wasn't gonna happen with the way that we had to shoot this so I'm trying to um, kind of do what I can to create a visual separation in a different way since I wasn't able to do it the way that I would have preferred. I can't wait to see all of your edits Mindfall. So um, Mindfall here in the chat has all of his own versions of all of these shoots. Um, basically Jared and Corey Mindfall and I all went out together um, we did three location shoots on three different days. I don't know if that hurts or helps. <laughs> now I just look like my leg is just like extra cut off. I don't know. I just dialed it back a little bit. How far did I dial it back? Maybe like halfway of my... That was before I added any changes. Okay, I'm gonna like 
undo like half of my work, which is something that I frequently do. I'll like check and I'll be like, maybe I should dial it back a bit. And I just like go through my history a little bit. Uh, so anyway, there we go. I, I tried to create a separation. Um, you know, maybe your, hopefully your brain will fill in that I'm, my foot is stepping on another surface, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Two bits are not two bits. Thanks, Divinicator, for the hundred bits. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that that is what it is. It is the shot that we got. So, um, and all of them were like this because I just couldn't put both of my feet up there. So, uh, the next thing I want to do is a selective color layer, which I've already done some color grading, but I'm gonna do more. Kind of fine tune it. Um, cause what I did in Lightroom was pretty much just like basic edits Taking the blacks out of the black gives it kind of a matte effect, which is interesting Or rather I like that because especially because I've already tinted them green It's adding like another contrast to it, but I don't want it to be that severe I would do it a little bit though. It's like even a tiny bit is still pretty apparent. Okay, super tiny. Two bits for 2B, that's right. Thanks, Jared. My last stream was in May? Dang, you're right. Yeah, I didn't stream in June. That was a bummer. Um, a lot of stuff going on for me that I got distracted. Just adding yellow or blue. Ooh, the blue is really interesting, actually. Do I like that more than the green to make the no, because the green makes the shadows separate from both the blue tones and the, um, like, orange. I guess teal and orange, whatever. I guess maybe blue. That is probably more blue. And so when I make that more, when the, the darkest shadows are also blue, then it There's like fewer elements at play in the image overall. Yeah, I didn't even realize it had been so long. Um, that's kind of a bummer. I should make sure I get my all of my archive, my streams archive. Um, Adding magenta to it makes it more of a purpley tone though, which is also super, super interesting. I actually might like that more. Movie Boy, thank you for the sub. Movie Boy 1997. Lawrence Turtles wants to edit photos watching this. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I actually really like what this is doing. With the purples. But do I like it more? I'm like turn these edits on and off. This is more dramatic, I think, and this is a little bit more subtle if I go with this. The blue naturally draws attention. Purples are better, says with photography. Let me see. Um, Space Disco says, I feel like the blue naturally draws attention to the center because it's a more smooth gradient, but also like that the green takes elements from the green in the trees and makes it come together well. Yeah, Space Disco, I hear what you're saying there and that it uh, um, draws attention to the greens in the background, but now that I'm thinking about that, you raise a good point, but now that I'm thinking about that, I'd rather downplay them. So I agree with Vontography um, to go with the purple instead as well. Um, I know you're always 
uh, Von Tography talking uh, shit about yellow green tones found in nature. And so I was mindful of that while editing. But one of the reasons why I added green into the shadows was because I was looking at the colors from the game specifically and the reference material and the source image and kind of um, deciding whether or not I could adopt those colors for this photo um, in a way that would kind of place it in that world. But ultimately, I don't think that... Like, I'd rather serve the needs of the photo than try to force the photo to be what I wish it could be to match what the game is. Um, and so in a lot of cases, I think taking the cyan out of that as well is going to help. Not this far, but just looking at how the reds interact with that is really interesting to me. So I'm going to bring that back up a little bit, but still have it. That's probably good. Yeah, this is really cool. I love the variety of tones here along and the way that it leads. I mean, this is just like leading your eye in a circle um, and framing everything and, and providing this vignette for it as well. But I really like how um, does desaturate the green says Vontography. I'll check that out. Um, but I do like what this is doing for the color overall compared to before. It is a lot more dramatic. Okay, well, we've only done black so far. I'm taking my sweet time with this selective color. So now we're in neutrals, um, which is going to be gray tones or like middle of the road, like grayscale value, I guess. Um, I don't want to mess with this too much. I'm looking at like how this affects. I don't want to do that. I'm just kind of sliding it around to see what it does. Um, I kind of like just like the balance that I've already set in this photo because I've arrived here after already adjusting curves and contrast and exposure and lots of other things. So um, I don't really want to change that on a whim unless it is deliberate. And this is interesting. I don't want to take it all out, but taking out a lot of the yellows really changes the feel. I like the balance of the warm and cool, though. Um, and I don't really want to lose that, but I can adjust it here. And I think bringing it down a little bit, a little bit more toward the cool tones, because you have this whole bright area where it is warmer. Um, I'd rather the outside. You know, before I make a lot of really fine adjustments like this, I am going to mess with my greens here in the center. So let's do that. This is um, my green tab, which I have... Wow, that's adjusting the blacks actually more than it is adjusting anything else. I think I've actually destroyed a lot of the green tones in the trees yeah because as I move these tabs you see the changes in the darkest blacks because that's where I um, had added green in Lightroom and I removed green from the trees already so what you're seeing is actually a lot of yellow so let's see what else we can do with it and that is gonna adjust that's a bummer. Maybe I should go back in Lightroom and make it less and separate it. Nah, I can just, I can adjust for it here. Make a mask for the tree area. Yeah, I can do that. Um, I still want to decide where I'm going with a lot of this overall. Okay. Well, I guess if that's the case, to decide what order I'm working in. Going back to the neutrals, I had taken yellow out and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to maintain what I have on the outside, at least for now. And yeah, we can make a mask. Uh, let me 
we hit back here? Divinicator's asking what's the story behind the tap tap emo. It was leatherworking streams. Yes, thank you, Dry Erase Girl, with the answer. Link fan says, as I get older, I start to realize just how important everything in a photo is really is. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it, or that can go into it, you know, depending on who takes the photo and who edits and why and how. Um, but you know, I like to put thought into the cosplay photos, or I do my best to anyway. Uh, but I'm still learning a lot, so. Uh, Divinicator says, a lot of the game has a sepia overtone. Do you think you'll push toward that or just full color? Um, Divinicator, that's a good question, and that's sort of uh, what I was getting at when I was talking about how I had already earlier decided to add greens to the shadows, um, in that I was trying to take what the game has, and whether it's the sepia tone or the greens or whatever, and trying to add that to the photo that I had, and I feel like trying to force it into a color grade that isn't natural, that doesn't lend itself naturally to, wasn't doing it any favors. Like, I'd rather just bring out the best of the photo and what was captured and, yeah, adjust it to create a mood, um, but rather than... Um, rather than taking my like pre taking a predetermined color scheme and saying well it's going to be this and it needs to be a sepia tone and then trying to force my photo to have that um i feel like ultimately is not as strong of a decision so i guess hue saturation is what i'm gonna do and put a mask on it um I believe that's correct. Normal brush tool. Smaller, but not that small. Okay. So I'm putting a little hole in my hue and saturation, and now I'm going to just change it to something ridiculous. Cool, purple, looks great, awesome. And now I'm going to use that in order to help like guide my eye and make sure that I know where I'm putting the mask, and it looks like I'm going to have to undo this partly. Be more careful around these edges. I should probably zoom in. I'm just being lazy. So, for the uninitiated, masking is like um, creating layers that only affect certain parts of the images. Uh, well, masking is specifically a way to make your layer only affect certain parts of the images. Um, so what I'm doing is creating an adjustment for the hue and saturation for this section of the image only, um, and doing that by kind of drawing on in black and white which parts will be affected versus which will not. That's why things are temporarily purple to assist me in like really differentiating. It doesn't have to be like 100% flawless in the cutout, but it needs to be like pretty close to so that it's not um, like, like the color change won't bleed onto parts of the image where I don't want it. So I'll zoom in a little bit farther to make sure I've got details on this, but for now.
And I can make my brush bigger again. This place was such a really cool location to visit. It took us a little while to find because it's very much like off the beaten path. We had to take some back roads to reach this particular section of the park um, or the trail, but uh, it was super worth it. And we saved ourselves a hike through the trail, which would have been, I guess, up to three miles from the other part. Okay. Oops, not that far up. Okay, now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer and make sure the outline of the figure is like nice enough. It's pretty grainy, unfortunately. We weren't working with a ton of lighting because it was starting to get later in the day and we were within a mountain range, but down between them. So, um, like there was still some light out at this point, but our photographers are shooting from deep within or deeper within the tunnel. And, um, as Corey put it, it was like, it's like being in a bowl where <laughs> You, you need the direct overhead light to kind of like illuminate the whole area and like get that natural sunlight in there to reflect off of things. But anytime later in the day, once it starts setting and goes down, like once the sun is at an angle where it's hidden behind the mountains, it's much darker, much earlier compared to like golden hour elsewhere where the land is flat and the sun isn't being like prematurely hidden. Um, so that was something that I wish we had been able to account for, uh, as we were planning this shoot, because we just didn't know exactly what the geography was like, uh, or what to expect from what time of day. Um, and you know, we worked with what we had and it was fine and I'm happy with the shots that we got, but, uh, it's something I'm going to plan for next time is to be there closer to probably midday. Um, and see what lighting results we get. All right, I probably don't need to be like this specific about this edge, but it makes me feel good. And I don't like, uh, I'd rather have a crisp line here if I can. Hope this area is filled in. We'll see you once I start changing things. Okay, that's probably fine. Um, if I'm unhappy with anything, I'll change it some more. Uh, except the color. Okay, the color is not fine. Um, oh yeah, perfect. <laughs> Green. So this is probably closer to what it was as shot or extra green. Adding more blues to it just makes it look really fake and weird though. And I don't want to make it like a totally fake color. So I guess I'll just desaturate it. Um, having it be more towards yellow and orangey, I think is good, but then still desaturated. Using bracket keys to quickly change your brush size. Thank you. Thank you for teaching me how to actually use Photoshop, uh, photography because, uh, <laughs> hit backslash to see your mask way more clearly. So you have all of these these actual um, shortcuts memorized, and uh, I do not. So thank you for teaching me, Photo Senpai. Do I want that? Do I want it to be lighter? What do you guys think? I don't want it to be like all the way gone, but like just how much do we want to see? I'm looking at it and I'm trying to decide. I need to clean up the mask around the legs if I do anything dramatic, but. Uh, let's see. 
And I'll let you do a CGI in a giant robot? Okay, sure thing. Yeah, let me just do that, Link fan. <laughs> Bob Ross would love that color. I don't know which one that is. No donation goal today? Do I not want your money? Well, I always want your money. Uh, I don't have a donation goal in mind immediately. Uh, well, I thought about getting myself another 2B costume that's fresh because I don't feel like making it. Oh my gosh, I don't feel like making it. Um, but, yeah, I don't have a donation goal in mind, so if you feel like giving me money, great. But <laughs> otherwise... You know what? I need to get a second monitor. It can be for that. I thought I was going to get one, but I just haven't yet. I think you should still see the trees. It makes it look like natural sunlight, says Lauren's Turtles. That makes sense. Second monitor, easy donation goal. You're right. All right, guys. Send me money. <laughs> uh, or just enjoy my streams. That's fine, too. Okay. So now I'm thinking about making it lighter in general, even like quite light, but not having it be like totally gone. What do you guys think? Where's the sweet spot in here where it's like, oh, it's just kind of disappearing. more desaturated. Well, this is what it looks like totally desaturated. Oh, well, now you can clearly see where my mask is and isn't. Um, perfect. There we go. Yeah, I'm stepping into an acid trip. Um, I feel like desaturating it much more than this just makes it look like a little odd. Like, it makes it look like manipulated rather than what the environment would be like. I think that making it brighter, like it's just getting um, kind of washed out by light, it makes a lot more sense. But that's the difference that it's made turning this mask on and off, so... Okay, um, if backslash isn't working, well, let's see if it does. So selecting the mask, and there it is. You're correct. Cool. So now I'm going to use this to make a much better mask. Thanks for the tip. We need, to, we need some hardness is the problem here, is that I have no hardness. Oh, and because my stupid... Okay, no wonder I was having so much problems. <laughs> my brush presets. See guys, I'm not good at Photoshop, or I'm good enough to figure out how I messed up eventually. <laughs> uh, so we're turning off all the jitter and color dynamics that I had previously turned on and forgot to go and check. And that's why my stuff is so messy looking, is because it was literally just on the wrong setting. It's because I had set it up to be messy. Um, spacing is fine. Okay, cool. Well, now that that mystery is solved, let me resume as though that didn't happen. Oh, wow, look at how nice and evenly I'm able to apply this brush now that I'm actually doing it, using it the way that I intended. Hmm, yay. That's right, come to my photo editing stream where I expertly edit my photos. <laughs> Thank you guys for putting up with me and not judging me too harshly, I hope. Uh. Oh, <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry about the accidental timeout, dry erase girl. Luckily, night Nightbot is a little harsh, but um, luckily privileges are restored almost immediately, so there's nothing really lost here. Um. Yeah, cleaning up these lines is satisfying, although that was messy, but whatever. <laughs> um, 
I really, really enjoyed having this opportunity to go and explore my natural surroundings, which I realize, you know, I live here, I can go, I can do that anytime technically, but I didn't have a, a reason to make it a priority until my friend visited and then I was like, oh, well, we better get some of these, we better get some locations lined up for our shoots that we have planned. And so suddenly it became a priority for me in a way that it hadn't been. And doing that was very eye-opening to how much natural beauty there really is out here, which like I was aware of, but I hadn't really thought about how, um, you know, I could really implement it. Come on, please. <laughs> My computer is lagging. And so now having gone and done this and having spent my time, um, you know, out in nature, walking around and trying my best to do these shoots and find appropriate spots and plan everything. It's just been so rewarding and so artistically satisfying that now I'm just like on a roll and I'm like, can't wait to do it again. Awesome. Where's the next one? Who's going with me? So I want to make this a trend where I'm just like going out into the nature around me and shooting because there's so much opportunity here and I don't want to um, be blind to that or not take advantage of it. Hello. My son is here to visit us. Photography teaching me how to do straight lines. I actually have heard that trick before, but I forgot it. So thank you for the reminder. I think that was most of the straight lines that I was doing. Um, but I will try to keep that in mind for next time. I'm just going to redraw the body entirely, I think. Aries, did you want to come up here and visit with everyone? Um, I have tons and tons of editing to do. I also only have one week to prepare for CoxCon, which is my next event in the UK. Um, so those are my next priorities for this coming week. Uh, I intend to stream a little bit. I hope that I can work on my, um, next cut sew pattern that I, I posted about because I have several of those ready to go, but the one I'm gonna do next is a sailor shirt and bloomers is really, really precious. So um, yeah, those streams will be Wednesday and Saturday and I should be on track to do those. All right, now, I actually have another idea. Let's see if this works. Eh. Oh, that does work. I've never used my bracket keys like that before. Ha ha ha. Thanks. Please just highlight the whole sword and make me not have to draw every little bit of it, please. Please, for the love of God. Nope. Okay, so that's like roughly <laughs> what I'm going for and I'm about to shape it up a little bit more. Um, so now I have a selection and now I'm going back to my mask 
and I'm just gonna fill it with black is what it needs to be. On the mask layer, yes, that is correct. Okay, now I will clean this up a little bit. What was the shortcut again? Backslash. There's my backslash, yay, there's my mask. Okay, now I'm removing my selection and I will clean up the rest by hand, but then that saved me quite a bit of drawing, I think. Let's zoom in. Select, select a mask to clean up that selection with the radius. See, <laughs> you should just give me private Photoshop lessons. Um, I know a lot of these, I've seen a lot of these tips and shortcuts in tutorials that I've watched and so I'm aware of them, but I don't have them committed to memory. So I think that I need to just start doing that more. But anyway, uh, this is where we are at right now, and this is what I'm going to keep it at. Evil Crash gifted a sub to Vontographies! Well, that's so kind of both of you. <laughs> oh, and Divinicator donated $5 saying, okay, here's for another monitor. <laughs> Thank you very much. I don't know if I think I missed that one or maybe I did say it out loud and just already forgot because I'm so scatterbrained right now. But thank you. Um, I'm not really concerned about cleaning up every last little detail on this mask, largely because the hue and saturation is not, the changes are not going to be evidenced on the black silhouette of the figure, um, or at least not very. So spending a ton of time making sure every pixel is properly selected or not um, is probably not worth my time. But I do want to have the general shape and outline um, to the point that it, it won't um, create flaws in the image or like won't create like weird patches of color in places that I don't want. Um, oh, bracket keys. That's right. See, I'm learning. I'm learning my, <laughs> uh, shortcuts little by little doing my streams in public. Um, opens me up to all kinds of opportunities to learn. Oh, I wanted to liquefy my wig a little bit. I did not get the perfect shape that I exactly wanted. I did my best. I was, st I styled this wig like actually several times. I kept putting it on and Part of me feels like it's too short, but then comparing it to the to be reference images, it's actually not. It's, I think it just needs to be more layered and feathered out. Um, one thing I've noticed about to be and about this cosplay and other cosplays, when I put it on myself and saw it all together for the first time, I saw myself in it and I thought, oh, I should have adjusted the proportions because that doesn't look right. And then I went and compared it to the actual reference images of Tubi and they are correct in a lot of places. So like what, I mean, I'm not saying that this is perfect. Um, you know, I also didn't make the costume, so it's like, it wasn't even made for me. Um, so there are certainly ways I could have improved the fit, but what I am trying to say is like, okay, having the, um, stockings come up to the point where you can't really see the tops of them. In this photo, you can barely see the tops of them, but generally they're hidden behind the skirt in most of the other photos of me. And when I first saw that, I thought, oh, that looks wrong because it's, it's visible for all the other cosplayers. But then I actually went and looked at the reference image and it's not supposed to be. And that it is supposed to be worn like this, but I'm so used to seeing it this other way commonly because 
And the same thing with the wig. I think that almost everyone has wigs that are too long, but it's so common that you're so used to seeing that, that like having the shorter wig looks wrong. And it's just like an interesting kind of phenomenon of like, the source material and versus like the public perception of the source material that's kind of created a new canon of like what people expect to be to look like. Um, and I'm not saying that this is perfectly accurate or perfectly, you know, done in any way, but I did my best. Um, and the ways in which it looks wrong to me are not actually all inaccurate. So canon versus fan and cis based disco. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that, um, you know, yeah, it's like you kind of expect it to look a certain way. Have a good night, Vontography. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Um, thanks for helping me get this mask set up. And now that I got that underway, select another layer. And now I can adjust this hue and saturation independently and know that it's clean. Where did I have that? Oh, well, that's kind of nice. Just having it more on the yellow side of things and having it blend more into that. That's kind of nice. I actually like that quite a bit. Having it in the whites though is a bit much for me. Oh, I'm sorry. It is 9.01 and what is happening, I'm sorry, is my monitor colors are changing. You guys can't see it, but my night light on my monitor just turned on. Um, and so my image was changing. It looked different to me suddenly. And that was because of the monitor and not because of the Photoshop that I had just done. So sorry if you didn't know what I was talking about for a minute, no one else could see what I was seeing. Uh, but now it's back to normal and I'm seeing the same thing as you and I'm hopefully adjusting things accordingly. <laughs> All right, um, I'm gonna save here. Uh, so I've adjusted the human saturation. I'm like pretty satisfied with that for now, at least. Um, one thing that I always do is like, I edit photos on stream, but I feel like I can only get them to like, I don't know, 90% completion. It's hard to quantify that kind of thing. Um, but it's hard for me to get to the point where I'm like, okay, it's 100% done. There's nothing else I can do to it. Well, I'm also streaming because my attention is divided. And so I feel like I always need that last, um, kind of look at it where I adjust the, the final edits and things, um, at the end when I'm just by myself and not streaming. Um, and that's the only way that I truly know if I'm finished with it because otherwise I'm just, you know, partly distracted. So with that said, I feel like I am kind of, I've reached all of the like obvious changes that I wanted to make to this photo. Um, I might continue adjusting it from here. There's always a, a good chance of that. But for now, it looks like how I want it to look for this editing session. So I think I'm gonna move on to this other photo. I'm probably not going to completely finish this one tonight in this stream, but I wanna start it. And here we go. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is frequency separation, which is an action I have set up here. Um, I am just going to dive right in. So this is a technique that you can do more research about if you're curious. I wish this photo wasn't quite so grainy, but it is what it is. There was, it was very low lighting in here, and so there's quite a bit of grain in the image naturally, and that's just... That's just what it was. Um, but anyway, I'm using my mixer brush tool on a color layer of frequency separation. 
So if you're curious about this technique, this is a skin retouching technique. I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of it because I honestly couldn't tell you exactly what it is. But it's a process of separating high and low frequencies, aka color and texture of the image. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm able to manipulate just the color only. And then I turn back on the color, the texture layer and you're able to see small changes which aren't really evident yet but I'm going to keep going and then I'll show a before and after. Um, and if you're curious about this technique for your own photos I recommend just watching a tutorial from someone more experienced than I. So the way that I'm using this mixer brush allows me to kind of push the color around in the image as though it were paint on an oil painting or something where the colors kind of stay mixable for a while. And so you can change quite a bit about an image in this stage where you are kind of like blending colors together, uh, adjusting highlights and shadows a little bit, kind of depending on where you push the color. Um, I had added some makeup to my face over here, like in the chin area, and I don't love the way that it photographed. It was an experiment. Um, you know, I'm not like super experienced at this style of makeup or anything, but I, I tried something and I didn't love the results. So one thing I'm going to do in this stage where I'm ma manipulating the color is I'm just kind of pushing that color down and just kind of letting these other tones in the face just kind of over overpower that. Um, and so this is one way in which I can pretty easily fix something that I dislike about the photo um, without having to like paint new color on manually. So that's really nice. Oh, Divinicator says that my donation bar at the top isn't updating. Thank you for making me aware of that. I feel like my Streamlabs must not be properly connected or something. Since I haven't streamed in a while, I don't know what issue I'm having, but apparently some of my settings got messed up. Um, maybe I updated programs without really realizing it. But um, I'm probably not going to stream for a lot longer tonight, so I won't be able to update that donation bar. Sorry if you're your name and stuff isn't up there. Um, I can't really see this stream right now. Um, but I'll try to get that fixed. I will get that fixed before my next stream, because that's annoying. I want it to be visible so people know who's donated things and what's going on and yeah. But thank you for your generosity. Divinicator, your support. Uh. <laughs> Link fan says, no, now people won't know it was me, as though people don't always know it was him. <laughs> You've made a name for yourself, Link fan. And yes, I can sense the sarcasm in your comment. Okay, so this has probably changed kind of the landscape of this color quite a bit. Um, I'm only, oh, that was a little bit weird. I'm only moving colors around. I'm not like manipulating the placement of my features, but it's probably going to have um, an interesting effect on what it looks like with the textures turned back on. Let's um, I'm gonna turn this brush up a little bit in size. Oh, I need to use my bracket keys like we practiced. <laughs> um, having a slightly larger brush allows me to mix a little bit more smoothly in these areas.
So you can kind of push the shadows around a little bit too. Um, and use this in a, a couple of different ways. So you're like dodging and burning and kind of, um, you know, color blending together. And this does have a smoothing effect is the purpose of this. It's like smooth, skin smoothing um, by making these colors blend uh, in a more flattering way. It's going to like contour the shape of the face, basically. So it's the equivalent of like, you know, also kind of adding highlight and, and shadow and contour with makeup. All right, let's see how this is doing because I don't want to make it too weird. All right, here is what it looks like with the texture layer turned back on. And here I'm going to undo the layer that I just added and there you go. There's the difference between what I did. So it's not like dramatically changing what my face is, but I was able to take a lot of the purple tones out of the chin, um, which is what I wanted to do. And then also just like remove small shadows like uh, around the nose, um, and just kind of smooth and blend things. And so that's what I did on that layer. Um, I'm going to keep working a little bit here. I'm going to do some dodging and burning, which will be like, um, adjusting the highlights. This is also like contouring where I'm Uh, creating a, a shape because I felt like I lost a little bit of that. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And I think that's about it. I don't want to, or, well, I'll go into the texture layer and do a couple really small touch ups to that. Everything's so grainy, but it is in focus. Where are we at? Yeah, there's all, there's hardly any point to this because it's so, yeah. I'm not gonna mess with the texture because the texture is already like grainy. So there we go. There's our frequency separation. And this is what it did for the face, which is just kind of um, accentuate the, the shapes a little bit and removing and like kind of dialing back some of my unwanted makeup. So there is that group, which I'm going to rename frequency separation. Uh, thanks link fan for gifting that sub to Anibis Ash. That was very kind of you. Oh, holy crap. How did I miss this? I might, do I not have, um, donation? Notifications on Link Fan. Thank you so much for the hundred dollar donation. Saying the second monitor, monitor or not, it's your money. Thank you so much. I feel like an idiot that I'm like not seeing these. I need to adjust my OBS uh, notifications and make sure that everything is linked up properly. Ah, uh, thanks, Link Fan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry that my I've never had my shit together. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with me anyway, coming to my streams, guys. It's okay, we all knew this is dry erase curl. Oh my gosh, I'm notorious for doing this. Uh, 
Uh, well, thank you. Um, hopefully I can get a second monitor going and then be doing all of my work on the same computer and not be logged in on two different ones. I'm wondering if that may have, might have caused any of my issues, but okay. Having done uh, those kinds of fine adjustments that I wanted to do, I'm going to do some more layered adjustments. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, so behind me, there's this like geometric object. What that is in real life was, um, let's see if I can select it with this one. It is uh, one of those like information plaques that tells you about the site. Um, it tells you like, what happened here, you know, how many years ago and, and that kind of information. We're going to select focus area? No, Celestian Mask. Select a mask. That's what it was. if it was able to clean that up accurately. It's kind of hard to tell. View mode, show edge. High quality preview. I hope this is what I want. I'll make sure that's out of it. Okay, cool. I think that's correct. Oh, well, that is... I'm trying to get rid of this bottom portion. Yeah. Okay, um, so I just selected this portion and I'm gonna remove it with a content-aware fill. So, um, hopefully that will continue this pillar behind me. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can watch it go. Uh, we hope that it works. Yay! That worked perfectly, I'm pretty sure. Deselect, and now I'm going to go in and, and get rid of those edges and the lines to make it blend in. But it did just create more pillar instead of... Um, uh, instead of that wooden box thing that was behind me. So what am I going to use for this? Maybe the spot healing brush tool? Just go in small sections usually. And just get rid of the hard edge. And this whole kind of area. Hmm. It's not perfectly separated, but I'm happy enough with it. It no, I'm not. I'm going to make some more adjustments. Uh, let's do a different technique. Let's do um, a rectangular selection from up here. Indy Hannah Jones, thank you so much for the sub. No, I'm not doing that. I take that back. Instead of doing that, I'm going to use the stamp tool where I can just be more selective about what I'm replicating. Clone stamp tool. That's what I want. And I'm practicing with my shortcuts, learning how to get better. Hardness I want to be much higher. So I'm just drawing in more of this hard line from up higher, although that's a bit much. Hmm. 
Maybe down here is what I really want. Okay, that's fine. And I'll return to my healing brush tool to kind of blend things a little bit more. All right, I'm satisfied that that is appropriately mixed, but also appears to be more or less a continuation of the background, except for this little area right here. I'm gonna do some adjustments to that too. Back to the clone stamp. It doesn't have to be like extremely precise, but you want to make sure that the like lines connect in believable ways, I guess. So now turning this layer off and on, that's what I covered up. And now it's pretty much gone. I'm pretty much happy with that. I'm gonna save it again. Oh, this one hasn't been saved yet, so I'm glad I saved that. <sighs> Now, one thing I want to try, and I don't know how, how this will go, but we'll find out, is I want to try um, copying my color grading lo levels or layers, that's what I'm trying to say, um, from this other image and seeing what it does for my second image. So I'm actually going to start with the selective color layer. I'm just dragging and dropping it, which is copying it. That's a bit much on the purple for where I actually want to take this, but because um, I had originally color graded this in Lightroom to have those green tones, so I'm gonna I'm gonna find something in between because I do like my original more. Okay, and then what else did I do? I had a hue and a saturation label, so I don't want that in here. So I am actually going to like give this one its own adjustments uh, rather than forcing it to match my my first one. So I added tons of magenta to the blacks. I'm going to just dial that back quite a bit. That makes everything super gray. That restores my true blacks. I like that. Um, and we want cyan out of the shadows. It is quite a bit in the highlights, but I don't really like having it missing from the shadows. They do have quite a bit more warmth when it's at least neutral, neutralized though. So let's just bring this one back to zero if I can. There we go. Because these kinds of pillars are like a warm rosy brown versus the cold shadows, and I like that contrast. I want to kind of keep it where it is. Okay, so let's go to neutrals. Oh, I never even made it through all the color grading on my last image. That's That just occurred to me. So this, I can't really mess with it that much. Yeah, I don't really want to. We're only going to see so much detail in the dress because it was dark when we shot and we were limited um, in a lot of ways, but that's what we got, so we have to work with. So I'm just making some fine adjustments to these different um, categories. 
Also, before I go on, I think I'm going to start actually with a curves layer because that's what I had done with the other image and then I kind of chickened out. What does auto curves want from us? It's also just slightly brighter. I can support that. I can dig it. I actually feel like it could be quite a bit brighter. Um, looking at the hair is like the, the point of like true white in this image that's going to be the brightest. And everything else can be brought up to just be under that, but I'm also considering what that's doing for the mood of the image, you know? Um, and how much light and shadow there is, and what balance we strike. Okay, yeah, that works. All right, so back to back to work on my selective color. Oh, that can make the whites a lot harsher and brighter, which I actually kind of like. I don't want it quite that high, but I'll take some black out of the highlights, out of the whites. And also some yellow out of them. I think they just need to be more cool tone in general. Although the cyan adjustment appears to be fine. This is one of my favorite ways to color grade in Photoshop. Oh, come on. There we go. I got it to zero. Uh, is using these selective color layers, sorry, is one of my favorite ways to color grade in Photoshop, is what I was trying to say. Um, and you just adjust the sliders and figure out what you like for uh, changing colors. Yeah, um, so this I wore this costume because it was provided to me by a friend and because I wanted to wear it for her and to help her get beautiful photos of it, you know, I hope. Um, but I also did my research and I was watching some playthroughs. I didn't have time to really play the game, but I, I did research the character. I did watch um, one of my friends playing um, a YouTube series. There's not really much green in this image to react to, so I actually don't need to make these adjustments. Um, and I learned about 2B, and I, I watched the game unfold, and I really liked it. And it actually has made me feel like now I want to, like, I want to cosplay 2B more. I want to learn more about her, because I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I want to keep going on it, because I'm, like, very invested now, but I don't have my own save file, so I'm like, okay, I have to finish my friend's playthrough and watch this whole game, because I need to know what happens to these beautiful robots. Um, this is adjusting the plants behind me slightly, but I kind of don't want to now that I'm really looking at it. Um, or maybe just a tiny bit like that. I don't know. I like having those natural greens coming out. Alright, well there's my selective color layer. I'm pretty happy with that. These images are pretty different color tone wise, but in both cases I was going towards what I felt like the image naturally lent itself to. And so I didn't want to, um, I don't want to try to force them to be the same just for the sake of that. Didn't Jared play it? Um, yeah, he did play it, but I just didn't watch his playthrough. <laughs> I, I don't know if he has the whole playthrough 100% on 
his channel. I don't think that he does. I, he did play it, but I don't think that he did like a one, full 100% playthrough that you can go and watch. Um, or at least if he did, he didn't mention it to me. And I didn't sit there and watch him play it. He just played it on his own. So I watched it separately from, from somebody else's playthrough. No offense to Jared. Um, I've, I love him. But yeah, it wasn't on his channel. He just did it. It was it was in his top ten. Yeah, he did really like the game. So, all right, I think this is gonna be pretty much the end of my stream. Um, I got these two photos edited, and I'm really happy with them. And I wait, can't wait to share them tomorrow. I'll probably do like some more adjustments, uh, just because, like I said, I always like to look at them when I'm not streaming, so that I can fully concentrate on them, and make sure they're exactly what I want. But um, otherwise. I'm quite happy with what this is so far, and um, I think any kind of adjustments from here on out will be relatively minor. And so, um, with that, I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for tuning into my stream. Thank you so much for the donations. Um, hopefully I can get another 2B costume. <laughs> no, I'm going to get a second monitor first, because that's what we need for our photo edits, and that's what I'm going to be doing all week. So thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for coming to hang out with me. Sorry I took so long of a stream break, um, but I'm going to try to get back to it this week. So with that, have a lovely evening and uh, good night. <laughs>